All right, guys, north, south. Um, so let's transition first. So if I had regular side control, okay, and I wanted to transition to north, south really safely, uh, I could go first, case Katami. So I lift up the near arm, shoot my knee through, right? I can even push this across her face. Now, this knee is by her head. I just need this knee on the other side. So I step it over. I'm laying on the arm. She fought it free. My elbow goes to the armpit. My other elbow goes to the armpit. No gi. I'm going to hold the hips. Gi, I can hold the pants or the belt. But I really need the elbow stuck in the armpit. And here, I can squeeze their head. Uh, it's not against the rules, OK? I can lay my stomach on the face. That's not against the rules. It's not comfortable for the person. They're not going to like it, enjoy it. Uh, they're going to think you're being rude, but it's not against the rules. Uh, in fact, the more you control the head, the better, because if she can get her head out, slide your head out, now she can start to escape. She can start to make frames. I lose all the control. So you're not doing anything wrong by squeezing the, the yes. heads of your knees, the crook of my knees. Now try to get your head out. Yeah, so she'd have to really make a big movement, right? And you've seen she went that way, Instead of going so that's why my elbows go to the armpits. And now she can't do the same thing, right? Go ahead. So if they bump like that, I like to cross my hands under their back, right? That's also not comfortable. Now they got something under their back. Now they're going to have a hard time shrimping, hipping from side to side. Uh, it's uncomfortable because the hand's right under the spine. Uh, so that's something I like to do. Um, but that's the idea. Keep the armpits, keep the head, and they're going to have a hard time escaping. It's going to be a hard time. Yeah. So now attacks. Uh, we have chokes, right? We have uh, basic collar choke, if I go in four fingers, four fingers, I can pull that, right? I can do the same thing with the lapel, right? None of that changes, you follow the same principles as the, I think on the first video that we did, uh, all those chokes, they're, they're the same. Baseball bat choke, when we spin around, we get to the same spot. So we already kind of know the chokes. Uh, Ezekiel, from under the head, hold the sleeve. We can do Ezekiel's from north south. That works too. Uh, so chokes, we kind of got. That's there. Uh, for other attacks, uh, I really like the reverse armbar here. So what I can do is I can dig in here instead of being under the armpit. And sometimes they'll do that for you. They know that they want your elbow in the armpit, so they do that. When they do that, I scoop up here, right under the tricep, and I put this to the other side of their rib here. My ear is pinching right at the wrist so the thumb stays in my neck. And right here it's already uncomfortable, but this isn't the submission. The submission is after I turn her on her side, I step up, and I probably picked the wrong side to do this. Do the other side. So I go here, step up, pinning the shoulder with my knee. That gives me the chance to let go with this arm and to find the elbow joint. Now I can reverse on block, right? I don't want to rush that. I don't want to go straight to this because now she can throw her back to the mat again and I lose it, okay? So I trap here. Can you throw your back to the mat? No. No, okay. Then I step up. Now my knee's there. Can you throw your back to the mat? No, I want to relieve my I, pressure on my arm yeah, first. Yeah, then I find the elbow joint. So reverse armbar, that's good. You can practice that with the dummy if you're not already. I can't hear you, Arsenio. Go ahead, Go ahead Arsenio. Give me one second, get my dummy. <laughs> okay. North South Church, I haven't seen that yet. Here. 
ends up right here. So first is transitioning from side control, right? Yeah. So you could do the whole thing. So you go side control normal. Uh, basic Atami, pick up the arm. That's, so that should be, arm. they're normally framing, right? So put that as a frame. That'll be in your hip bone. Yeah, under your arm, like near your hip. Yep. And your other, so now you're going to underhook the far arm with your left hand. And then pick up the near arm into your armpit or whatever and slide your left knee under the shoulder. Good. That's Kesa Gatami. That's how you would switch. Now you want to go north south, push that arm that you're holding across their face and throw your knee to the other side of the head. So now you'll be kneeling across both ears. And then they might take that arm out. They probably will. They won't like it stuck like that. And there's your north south. Can you see here that it's scoop this arm? Yeah, so now if you want that, you're going to go under the arm like you were. Yeah. And I just put my hand to their far hip. Here? Uh, the other, here? the one that's wrapping the arm. <laughs> we got the. <dog. laughs> So scoop and then here. Yeah. If you lock that arm out, it, it pins their arm in place. So it'd be like this. Yeah, it would be stuck. Then you use that to turn them sideways and then step your left knee behind their shoulder. Yep. Now you can find the elbow joint with your left wrist. And you crank. Yep. Don't lose the wrist. Keep it by your neck. Yep. Here. That would be yep. Make sure you get a good pinch on the wrist if you can. So that stays the whole time. Yeah. They're not socially distancing anymore. <laughs> They're going to be. <laughs> okay, you can switch to the Kimura. Yeah. Watching the music. Yeah. Does it matter which way you're you're looking? Uh, no, not when you're north south. Not doing. If you're just in the position, no. Right. Just. Yep. There are Dars here. There's a Dars when he turns sideways to get out. Can you set it up straight from like allow allow frame to come in so that you push it across? Uh, or is that dangerous? You know what I'm saying? I want a Dars. I would have to go here. I don't know. It's a long, that's a long way. That's a long way to go, yeah. yeah it might get loose. Um, but if you're trying these uh, north-south chokes, which we're about to go into, then when they try to defend, that's going to open up other other chokes. So we'll go over that. I got to show the north-south first, so then we can think about ways they're going to get out. So can I can we review the arm bar real quick? Can can what? Say it again. He froze. Oh, he froze again. Weird. An arm bar real quick? Just to, to see it or yeah, you're gonna do it? I'll do it. Okay, go. I have my hands here nice and closed into the armpit. Right? You swim one of the arms in. And then good. Yes. Yeah, very good. Um, so the grip there. Your left palm will be down. The wrist bone is right behind the tent, the elbow, the tricep tendon. And then your right hand, I like to hold underhand to help pull that left hand. But you could also go over your wrist and pull your wrist as well. That's fine. Yeah, either way. The, the top hand, the left hand will be palm down. Yep. So you're looking for the right 
Okay, so now let's do the north-south choke, which can be tricky. Okay. It's one of the moves that for a while I never knew, like there's a feel of each move that you know when you got it. And the north-south choke was one of the ones. That, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, the north-south choke was one of those chokes that I didn't know if I had it or if I didn't have it. Sometimes they tap, most of the time they would tap, sometimes they wouldn't tap, and I couldn't feel the difference, right? So um, you gotta get the feel for it, you gotta keep practicing it, and eventually you'll get the feel like, okay, every time they tap, these are the things I'm feeling, these are the key points, and these, when, when I don't have these things, they don't tap. <clears throat> so I'll try to say some of those things. So we're gonna go here, north-south, right? Now if I want the north-south choke, so I'm gonna, uh, I'll do this side. I'm gonna scoop up this arm, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so I scoop up this arm real deep. She said I, I punched her, because my knuckles hit the face here. I'm scooping up like that. Uh, should be able to, oh, you know what? I'm gonna spotlight it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make myself bigger so you can see better. All right, there we go. So I had a good scoop like this. Yeah, and actually hit, hit her face. So we're here. It's like the half from wrestling. I do a half on her arm. That's why, that's so when I, I'm lifting the shoulder, so it's harder for her to face me and shrimp, but also she won't be able to go away because I'm also about to take this hand out from her armpit and go around the neck. And where I'm placing, so now I'll do this side, this arm. So when I'm placing this, this arm is my bicep right under the neck, or under the jaw, I should say, and I do like a half Nelson on this side. And so I'm looking for my bicep to be in her neck, no deeper than my uh, pectoral, like armpit area, and I'm going to flatten out, I'm going to slide. So my chest is touching the mat. And from here, I can squeeze, and I get the choke. Yeah. Well, my grip, my grip is like that. And it's like as flat as it can be. If my grip is turned this way, then you can imagine there's that much extra space that I can't lower my body choker with. So if I can, if I can turn my wrist this way, as if I was going to put it flat against my chest. Now there's no space, right? In this hole, that's what we're trying to eliminate. So if it's turned. So your this, grip is this? Now I just opened up some space. Is this your grip? Yes. Like palm towards my chest. Right? So just there. Yeah. So north, south. Okay. I get a good scoop on the arm right under the shoulder. I'm like lifting the shoulder with my wrist bone, okay? And now I'm gonna move my head out of the way, right? So now it does matter where I'm looking because now I'm gonna dig in deep with this hand around the head, I'm putting my bicep under the jaw and I lost my hand right by the wrist. Now I settle down, slide back, getting my chest on the mat. And here I can squeeze. And this squeeze, is not elbows together. This squeeze is like you're flexing your muscle here. It's just this one arm that's squeezing. And so now you switch the arm in there. It's choking the neck. Okay. Now are you going to one side or the other on that? All off the side. So with your shoulder down or arm down. I'm putting my chest right here. So I'll just do it one armed. I'm sliding my chest to here. See how it's on the mat? This is where I'm choking. Is that towards the first arm or the second? That's towards the first that arm. I'm holding. So I'm holding that one. Right. So you're right. sliding towards that side. Yeah. That's the side you want to go to. Okay. Right next to her head, right above the shoulder, but not on the shoulder. Right. I'm 
here on the mat. So I'm trying to get my bicep to be able to chop down as low as it can. Now I'm all, let me change the, the funny background. So is this a, a blood or air? Where'd you feel the chill? Blood. Blood? It is blood? She said blood. There's, blood. A, okay. there's a chance it's going to get the throat, and that's why I had to ask. Because depending right. on my body type, her body type, where I'm able to settle, like it should be blood, but if anything's off, it could definitely get the throat too. Yeah, that's why I'm asking because, like I said, it's hard because uh, the bear's, the dummy's head is this big. Yeah, no jaw. You know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. So, one is under the shoulder. Yeah, we don't think that's okay. We'll make you come back in. This is, this is, is this correct? One underneath the shoulder? Yep. Correct. And then the other hand, wrap around. So don't be on his face, be on his shoulder for now. Yeah, so you can dig that in. You want his chin in your armpit. And now this elbow, the right elbow, should be, <clears throat> should be on the mat. So the choking arm, the elbow should be on the mat. That's the key point. Oh, I see, I reversed the grip. Yeah, right and now slunk, slink yourself back so your chest is on the floor. And your head will be like in his armpit or even on the mat if you can. Yeah. Yeah, really back. But yeah, I, I feel it in my throat though. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I feel it. So, so the, key, the key to that seems to be to, to basically separate myself from his body along the mat line. Right. Yeah. Uh, so because if you're on top of him, you're creating space for him to breathe. You want to try it? And the last part, Brian, is just like a sprawl, right? So, I'm going this way. Yeah, it's like sprawling and bellying out. Yeah, as soon as he went down, yeah, as soon as he laid down, it's as soon as he laid back, it started to. He felt it right away. Yeah. Okay, so now some transitions for different options when they try to escape. Okay, so uh, whether I'm going for the north south choke or not, right, there's different ways you can try to get out. So we talked about pulling the shoulder underneath. No, you wouldn't be able to do that. But you can pull the shoulder underneath and turn sideways on this side. Nope, on this side. Yeah, and try to trip. So if she moves somewhere like this, that's where I can scoop up this arm. And throw in the darts. Okay. So let's say I'm trying to choke. The arm that I'm trying to hold when I go for the north-south choke, she's able to pull it out uh, and turn on the side to face me. It's a normal escape. So now I have to take this hand, pummel through to the neck. Okay. And so now you have Dars from there. A Dars. Yeah, that's a Dars. I'm gonna go through those motions. Yeah. Try that. And then the other one. Let's say I'm trying to. As, as, oh, let's see. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you're going to be able to get to your knees here. 
Is it going to be that which or which way are they going to turn? So I obviously so, have to move the so they want to pull the arm that you're holding. That trapped it, arm. It could go either way, right? But this first defense, they pulling their shoulder under, so they're slipping that arm out so they can face you. So right? this is so the arm that's free is going to be their top arm. So this, um, what you call it? Just to simulate. Am I going to go for the choke? And uh, then they simulate it, go to the north south choke. Right. I got, the, I got this arm turn, hooked. Yeah. Make them turn sideways. So, uh, the other so, way. The other so way. So, it would be the loose arm yeah, that they would turn towards out. me. He's going to yank okay. his stuck arm underneath. So, look, if she has me with this arm is stuck. I'm right. Under. So now I can start to escape, right? I can start to, right. start to bring in my guard. So the stuck arm, the arm, the new arm for the Dars is going to be the other arm. Would would be this so this one. So this one would, out, would be under. She's going to pummel through this one. But. She's gonna pummel the other arm. So, so, so then from there, I'm pulling. I'm pulling out of this one. Yeah, and you're gonna go armpit to neck. So you're gonna re-pummel it. Yeah, and then go under the neck, and then make your darts grip, and that'll be your choke. Man, it it's the same thing we were talking about with Alex, where I said, "Hey, right. long ways." Right. If they're making their motion. It's not like you're trying to create that. They are creating the position. You're reacting to it. And so it's like one less step you got to take to get there. Because right. they're, make, they're making the movement for you. Instead of you going for it, right. you're letting them yeah. put themselves into it, essentially. Just in case he's going to turn for this way? Yeah, but don't, don't go with them. Let them turn. And you want to stay on your knees. You don't want to fall to your hip. Yeah. So now your left hand go through the armpit. This is easier to see because he's moving, right? Yeah. Your left arm goes through the armpit. In the other direction. And then under the neck, like a dars. Yeah. There you go. Make sense? So the arm that's on bottom was the arm that was stuck in the north-south choke, right? Right. Okay. So now another escape. We'll go to the darts. Okay. So this time, the arm. So I'm I'm trapping the same. Put me again. Okay, so I'm going to be trapping the same arm that I was trapping before. This is the arm she was pulling it underneath before and turning sideways. Do that. She was doing that motion, right? Now, this time, she finds the space to punch this out and go that way. Oh, that's bad. Right? So I missed the arm. Make sense? Yep. Instead of pulling it underneath, she pummels it through. And punches out and gets to her knees. Okay, we're gonna stop it halfway through that roll. So she punches through this hand, not all the way, halfway through. I'm moving slow. Okay, okay. so slow motion. She punches through. I weave my hand, and now I have the darts. 
Mm-hmm. Make sense? Yep. So I'm getting her before she gets to her knees. So one more time. She's punching through, starting to roll. I realize, and I pummel. Take my grip. She's still sideways, and I get my hook there. That's the first part. Do you want to try that? So work it where he's rolling the other way now. He's going to have to get his arm free and kind of punch through. Like so you I have this. Knees. This is, it's the trapped arm, right? So I'm going to do the same yeah. side you're doing. The trapped arm is going to get out. Come through, punch through. Punch through, and he starts to roll sideways, yeah. And you, now, you hook it? You could hook it and put him flat, but we don't want to do that. We want to get him in a dars. So we're going to so. through, under the neck, and make our grip. Yeah. This one happens faster, but it's easier to catch than the other way. The other way takes longer to catch, but it's easier to do, if that makes sense. Can you show me the back side? Yeah. Where the actual, you know, where the hold is? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, the back. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be here. She punches through. My grip goes this way. I'm going to run my bicep to my hand and then up to the armpit. If I'm worried about this arm, I can trap the arm with my legs, be more perpendicular, and then I squeeze my elbows together just to get that finish. So it is there. So punch through. Yes. Now you're going to make a rear, go even deeper. You're going to make a rear naked choke grip behind their back. Yeah, right there. So, so I'm going here. Close to your bicep. And then. Fingers crawl up to the armpit. Yeah. And then here. Uh-huh. So, so coach, can you see us? Yeah. So I have him here. What? He's going the wrong way, right? Am I trying to go that way or this way? So we already went one way. We already went to your left. So now you're gonna get you're gonna let him get his arm out because he got his arm out, and now you're gonna roll towards the camera. But go slow and go about halfway, right about there. So Juan, in this moment, you need to be pummeling your hand to the armpit. So we could like underhook him. That might stop him, but it might not stop him, right? If we want to catch him in a submission, we can go from the armpit. So reach over his arm through the armpit and under the neck the other direction. Like that would catch him, that would slow him down, but then he could change directions on us, right? So your right arm, the arm that you were underhooking with, oh, so I wanna... you're gonna change direction and go from above the armpit. Go from above the armpit. Oh. Yes, go. right there. And you gotta punch that through because he's trying to go to his knees, right? So, but we're gonna slow it down. You're gonna stay sideways and let him do it because I have a different thing when they get to their knees. So if you stand up. Under the armpit, you need to reach deeper so you can make a rear naked choke behind his back. You're trying to do the darts. It's the same choke. I mean, I do it, but you know, it's not tight. Right there? Yeah, but it's not tight. You should, I can feel you're squeezing it. You're muscling it. You know how to do the, the darts one? You know how to do the darts yet? I can't remember. I mean, sure. That's, that's the only reason you're having trouble. So you're entering from the armpit there. He has his elbow out because he's posting, like he's trying to get up. We need to eliminate that because I need to show the neck. Then when you run the hand from the armpit to the neck, you'll have less distance and you'll be able to reach. Then when you see your palm come out from under behind his head, run your bicep to the hand, fingers to the armpit. Yeah, so dip your right shoulder under so you can reach further. There you go. You should be able to see your hand coming out the back from underneath, oh, yeah. your neck. put your bicep to your hand and make it like a rear naked choke. 
and then you can squeeze there. Okay, I got it now. You got it now? Okay. Yeah. And so when I mentioned uh, moving his arm between my legs, that's one thing that takes away that frame. So he can't keep it away from his neck. It puts it closer, All right? It's something very easy we can do, and it takes away a lot of his defense. Okay, so you notice that it's pretty easy for them to get to their knees quickly before you're able to come in, right? So here should be your, your backup plan in that moment. All right. So so I'm going to go the same arm every time just to try to keep it looking the same. You can see what's different. Okay, so I'm digging in this armpit. Maybe I did it too late. She punched through and she starts to go. She's going to her knees, right? I was going for a darse here, but she kept going to her knees. So we end up in this position, uh, front headlock position, right? I want to lock my hands. I'm making sure my wrist is already right here under her chin. This hand is holding my wrist. But look what my elbow does. I can control her arm with my elbow. Okay? So I get there, I scoop my knee in, and this steps up. So it took her arm out of play. She can't break my grip with this hand. She only has one hand. Now I'm going to sit into her. I'm going to put her head to the mat. I'm going to throw my leg over where her belt would be. And then I can squeeze. That's a choke. It's a guillotine choke. Guillotine. And right. that was, that, I was just telling Lucas that. I'm seeing a guillotine here. Yeah. Let me do it again. So Marcel, I was going for this choke, but she didn't want her arm stuck. She punched through. I'm trying to switch to the darts, and she got to her knees. Right? So I scoot in. I already got my grip. I did that immediately. I step up, sit, put her head on the mat, and I throw my leg over. Then I can squeeze. Make sure when you throw your leg over, you're not lazy with it. I'm not putting it on her butt. I'm not putting it on her leg. Where the belt would be on the gi, I need it higher on her back than that. I need it to at least catch the hip, right? Because her defense is going to be to roll or to jump over my guard to the other side. And so I'm keeping her on the dangerous side. Let's try that. Could you, could you wrap your legs around and get into a guard? Say again? Could you, could you wrap your legs around them and, and go to guard? You could go to guard, yes. Yeah. Yep, that's totally fine. That's just a different way to finish. Okay. Yeah, you froze, so I don't know if you said anything after that. But yeah, that's a good, you can go straight to guard. Yeah. Okay, and then you don't want really to at least keep that one leg over the, the back? So yeah, so I'll show you that. Here. So if I go in, uh, I, you know, uh, go to turtle, boom, boom, boom. We got here, right? It's important that he doesn't go to side control on the opposite side of her head, right? So the head of her head on this side, the most important leg of my guard is this one coming over so she doesn't get her body to that side. That's why I step up and throw this leg over. But I can go to full guard too, right? But it's not bad she's on this side, right? If she passes the side control on the bad side, it's gonna, yeah, you'll feel it. It like neck cranks you and chokes you even more. So my main goal is make sure this leg gets over. And then if I wanna close guard, I can. But make sure that one leg is. Now, what do you do there? Hold on. Is the head going to be on the same side as the arm? 
it's going to be the opposite, correct? Opposite, yeah. For the guillotine, for the guillotine. Yeah, yeah. They'll try to see because the, the dummy's not moving. So, <laughs> yep. so, so have it here. Slide under him a little then, bit. And then just sit back. Head to the mat. So don't sit straight. Oh. Sit, like go to your shoulder. So you know, like the DDT in professional wrestling? You remember that? Right. It's, it's it goes not, this way. Yeah. And your leg goes over. We can't strike their head to the mat. But what we're doing is we're putting all of – we're making them carry all of our weight and their weight on their head. Right. right. Yeah. On their head and neck. A little higher on the back, Alex. Yeah. Right, and then this comes up, right? Yes, throw your right leg over and put, and lean this way. Put his head on the mat. I know you don't have a lot of mat space now, but okay. you want to put his head on the floor. Put <laughs> your weight on the head, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I'm going to go set this go the one here. So it's not so the, the end position isn't a Walsh position. It's that it is. It's uh, similar okay. to the Walsh, just the is? different spot. I'll show the okay. Walsh next because Arsenio asked a similar question. Yeah. So put his head on the mat there. You, I know it's hard. So if you scoot a little further down, you'll be able to do that. You just want to make sure you're practicing the position right. You know. Good. And then lean this way. Once you, if you get full guard, you don't have to put the weight down. You don't have to put his head on the mat. Yeah, if you have full guard, you don't need to do that. I'm leaning back this way, right? Yeah, so if you have full guard, you just, you're going to squeeze like this. So I, I describe it like, you're cradling a baby, right? You're trying to make space smaller here, so you cradle it this way, right? So and as you do that, you use your guard to push his hips away, almost like you're stretching them out. But what you're really trying to do is not, you're not trying to stretch his neck necessarily, you're trying to take away his ability to compress weight into his neck, right? If he can tripod up and compress his weight, basically get on his head, he can, he can last longer like this without being right. choked. So if I can stretch his hips away, it takes away his ability to resist it, right? I think the way you explained it once, Coach, to me in perfect sense, like doing an oblique crunch. Yes, you add that to the cradle and you're good. Okay, so now let's do another choke. This will probably be our last one, uh, called the Walsh. It's so similar. So we'll start with the front headlock position. Um, so let me trick it to show. Uh, head this way <clears throat> already. So everything like before, when we went for the guillotine, we got to here, right? And instead of stepping up to scoop this arm here, what I'm actually going to do is I push it across and I trap it with my hand. Can you see that? Yeah. So I got her head and her arm both in with one grip. I'm holding the tricep right close to the armpit. And I still use this hand to lock my own wrist, right? So now what I'm going to do is I shoot my knee in um, real close. So my hip next to the tricep, and I'm going to sit in the same way, throwing my leg over, and then I can squeeze. This is called a Walsh, 
It's a type of arm triangle also, kind of like the Doris, the guillotine, the arm triangle, the tri leg triangle. It's my bicep on one side of her neck and her own shoulder choking the other side of the neck. I'll do the other side just for a different view. So we were here. Instead of stepping up for the arm, I actually push the arm across. And with this hand, I trap the tricep. This hand is still going to grip my other arm, uh, wrist for support. I scoot in, step up, sitting, and throw my leg over. And I just squeeze back. <laughs> Let's try that. I think I like that one better. You, you, like grip, that one? <laughs> you grip, you grip higher towards the uh, like shoulder tricep area, yeah. correct? Like yeah. as deep as you can. Uh, you wrestled, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm setting it up like a gator roll. Okay. Yeah. So that so when you get here, just push it up. Yep. Get that grip. Then, yeah. Right. Yeah, so you almost don't even need your other hand, but you're gonna use right. it. Right. Yep. Just to grab. Yep. Now make sure yeah. your uh, left leg is gonna step in and trap the tricep. So you're gonna like block her, hit the outside of the tricep with your hip. Yeah. Yep. Oh. You're gonna trap. There first. Yeah, just slide okay. it in, right? Slide it. It's still gonna go against the waist, but right. it's blocking the tricep also. And then. You sit back like the other one. Then and throw your leg over. And that's gonna choke them because their neck's getting pulled by your bicep and then their shoulder is getting pushed in. Basically their neck's pushing into their shoulder now. When you yeah, start. I was gonna say, not to be cocky, but I think you can probably get that by that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once, I mean, you, if you can get that deep enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll get it before you seat down into, into the guillotine, into the guard. There's a there's a choke I do standing that's similar to that. So is this something that you might be able to hit from turtle? You can lock a runic and choke too, Alex, and then sit into it. Yeah. From turtle? I wonder about that. Is the same thing? Yeah, you could do it from turtle. Yeah, it's the same thing. You still want to sit in the same way just to lock it up because if he can move his hips, he can relieve tension. Okay. So you want to sit in and throw your leg over to, to stop that. But then I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be using this grip then, right? You could, yeah. It's going to choke him quicker. That's oh, yeah. Right. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be super tight. Wow, yeah. Yep. Because the first hand is really all we need. Like I was just right. talking about Senio. The first hand has it really tight already. The second mm -hmm. hand is just helping. So this grip or this grip, it won't matter. So, so is this called, what is this then called, the triangle? This is a triangle kind of. So um, I don't, I'm, I used to be a zookeeper. So I think in like, Family, genus, species, right? So the, arm, the triangles are a family of submissions, right? Arm triangle, and then arm triangles is like a genus. You have different arm triangles. You have a leg triangle, right? So those are a family. Triangles are a family. Uh, arm triangles would be a genus of that family, right? And then the Walsh is like a species of arm triangles, <laughs> right? Make sense? where a Dars is another species of arm triangle. Anaconda is another species of arm triangle. You should go so it's, it's, an, it's a type of arm triangle. It's called a Walsh joke. You should go make a tree with all of them. Like that. Say it again. You should make a tree with all the names and everything else. Yeah. Uh, that'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah, you could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you could. Interesting. Jesus, that's Rita. tight. Yeah. Does Rita work tonight? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, that's it's a really tight grip. So Alex yeah. is using a rear naked choke grip instead of holding his wrist, right? Um, 
there, there's a lot of different variations of grips, you know, that you can use. Now, what I'm saying is like, I mean, is it possible to attack the turtle that way? I mean, I know a lot yes. of times, I mean, people are going to be down and, and protecting their neck. Yeah. But if you reach, if you reach under and grab that armpit. Yeah, you can. So you might be able to. Today's, today's scenario was in catching it in a transition. The north south, uh, the right. Transition of the transition that they ended up was turtle, right? Right. A little bit of a looser turtle because they just got there. Right. And our hands are already in good positions because they were moving in transition. But you could still do that in a turtle, especially since a lot of people's turtles, they're very defensive, which means right. they're, yeah, it's harder to get in there, but they're also not moving around too much, right? right. They're kind of just sitting there deep trying to defend. And yeah. so you fake a few things. Maybe you fake like you're going for the, the, the hip or the leg or the belt, and then there's your armpit grip, right? And you start right. manipulating the elbow with your elbow, and then you can dig in the neck because now that hand's coming away from their neck a little bit, and you can get your grips, right? Or you push it across, so you push and pull, right? You push something that you really want to pull, pull right. something you actually want to push, right? And you get that A and B going on. And you set them up, right? Remember the setups. So as long as as long as we're talking about turtle, real quick, um, how do you? What's the best way to stop them from grabbing a leg while you're trying to set this up? Grabbing your legs? Yeah, I, I obviously don't want a single leg. I don't want to get single leg while yeah. I'm doing this. So when I was showing it, I was on my knees, but right. mainly to not put a lot of pressure on Rita. So you, you want to be on your toes. You want to always be active with your lower body. If they start reaching for it, you're pretty much sprawling already or ready yeah. to. So that's how you would avoid it. Uh, Rita, real quick. Uh, so if you're in turtle and I'm working these, these grips here and she's trying to get my leg, as soon as I feel yeah. you're starting to touch my legs, I start coming out here. Okay. You still work the move, right? So you're still working it while you sprawl? Yeah. I okay. can still work my upper body while I'm keeping my legs active. Yeah. Yep. That's always my issue is that when, when I get here, I start defending <laughs> the, yeah. the single leg or the double um, leg as opposed to attacking. You know, as a wrestler, I can tell you that's not a good – we work from there, and we try to finish – doubles and singles and any type of takedown there. Um, yeah. But it's not a good position to be trying to get a takedown, sure. right? right? We would rather have not been flattened out. We'd rather have a vertical base, right? And under your hips, but now you got us on all fours, broken down, we can barely reach your leg, and we gotta come up with an answer, right? Yeah. Do what we gotta do, but it's not where we wanna be. <laughs> Again, hard to scroll on going. Yeah. Also, uh, talking about the single leg. So, in wrestling, I always like defending single legs. Um, so, it was kind of natural for me in jujitsu to find more ways to defend a single leg. Um, so what I like to do, if someone has a single leg, let's say, let's say I was going for that same scenario here. I step up and she decides she's gonna latch on to my leg. Really it's not much to do, but lay back and throw this leg up. You let go of my leg. <laughs> it's not much to sit back and throw my leg over for an omoplata, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were doing uh, the choke. That we were no, doing. no. I was expecting. I wanted you. I wanted you to stay committed to the single leg. Oh, he's switching yeah. to a mukata. Yeah. Okay. Because he asked how to do, what happens if they start going for a single leg. He uh -huh. doesn't want them to get the single leg. Okay. And so I'm showing how to avoid it. But if they do grab it, that's great for omoplatas. I think I get focused on them not grabbing uh, grabbing my leg, and then I forget to. Right. 
Yeah, it's uh, you don't want to paralyze yourself by focusing too much on one thing, right? All right. Then you start fighting that one thing, and maybe they don't get it, but you don't get anywhere either. Right. You start to open up your mind to other options and be willing to go for them and even mess up in the beginning. Sure. The worst that can happen there, I messed up because she decided to let go of my leg. I'm just going to have guard. Yeah. It's not a big deal, you know? And that might happen. They might feel you moving and like, oh no, this is dangerous. And they let go of your leg. So now you play guard. No big deal. Or they help just pull you into the move itself. It does hang up. Yeah. Because it seemed like, you know, when she was pulling that leg in for the single, just putting it over, you know what I mean? Yeah. Less, um, less distance for you to put it over back. Yeah. They say you got to be flexible for that. I'm not flexible. And I can throw my leg. You just got to make sure you bend your foot inward and put it over the shoulder. You can even use your hand to help, right? And as long as the leg goes over the shoulder and the foot's blocking the face from coming back, you're going to have almost out of position. Whether you finish it or not is another story. But most people don't try to finish the omoplata anyway. They usually use it to um, get the upper hand and eventually sweep the person, you know. And then the threat of the real submission is always there. But it's an easy move. It has a lot of ways to be defended. And so you're basically putting yourself uh, plus one in the situation, right? And then they have to react. And then eventually you either end up on top, getting a sweep, going for the back, right? Or submit, uh, threatening other submissions. So just real quick, the Walsh is shoulder to arm fit, right? Walsh would be uh, what I call a front headlock or even right. a gator roll, like the beginning of a gator roll. That's well, that was my, that, that was my question. Cause I feel like if I went, yeah, it's like an anaconda. Did, so it's going to the anaconda, like an anaconda. But instead of rolling, you're sitting and throwing your leg over. So in what situation would you use Anaconda versus Walsh? Preference. Um, I would say preference, mostly. Okay. Yeah. Like what you like to go for, what your game is. Um, I, don't right. see, I don't see any reason not to do one if you could do the other. So there's no advantage of one over the other. Right, I would say preference. Okay. Yeah. okay. That was the only reason I was here when you when you mentioned it. I was like, wait, this feels like an anaconda. If you're a, okay, so here's here's one. If you're a guard guy, right. you're not, if you're a guard guy and you go for the Walsh and you mess up, they yeah, get the their head out, you're gonna be able to play guard. Right. You're a top game guy, and you go anaconda, and after you roll, their head pops loose, you're going to have a better chance of being on top yeah. where we're trying to finish it from, right? Because they're going to yank their head out. They're going to be halfway to the, their back, and you're going to have a leg wrapped up. It's easy for you to come to your knees. Right. Yeah. 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 So I would say that would be the reason. So, again, it comes to ga your game and mm -hmm. practice. But that, that would be the reason. There's this cool spot that you showed me a long time ago on Anaconda or Walsh. When, right here. Yes. Where the, it's, very e it's very easy to pull this arm across. Yeah. You showed me that a long time ago. Yep. But just with, with your one hand in such a weird position, it's so easy to pull that arm across. The reason I started doing that is because in wrestling, we use that grip uh, for the gator roll. And then you get a gable grip, and you can use this type of motion to, to make their whole arm move off, right? Because oh, yeah, okay. Because of that grip. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you just push it across with your grip. That's nasty. Yeah. And you're already halfway to the anaconda. Yeah. And you just dial on that shoulder. Yeah, yeah, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna uh, gator roll them, if you're gonna do the gator roll, yeah, then you uh, actually you want to get on your toes, cut an angle, then shoot your head under. So you're almost, you're not quite ninety. You can't usually make it that far, but you try, 
and then you shoot your head under for the roll. And it really twists them up. And that's where you get your first roll out of. And then they've changed the rules. You used to be able to do that multiple times. And they changed it where you have to score a different way before you can score with that move again. And they did the same thing with the gut wrench, where you had to yeah. score a different way before you did the move again. But with that kind of torque, when you could, man, I can't tell you how many times, how many matches I've won, <laughs> just going boom, 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 over and over. Because as long as you don't go off the mat, you can keep doing it. Back points. Yeah, and you you only need a 15-point lead on the person, right, at any given time to win. You get a tech fall. So if you have any lead advantage and you do seven of those, you win. You know, I've done that. Like, you do that, you go out of bounds, you latch on to it again, you do it one more time, you go out of bounds, and you got your points. You know what I mean? You win. So I've done that. I've done that with the gut wrench. So. They had, to, they had to change the rule because people were getting dominated too easy that way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that great. Right. That's my dog in the back. It's all right. All right. Stop it. <laughs> now you see use that same grip standing and hit a gator roll from standing. Mm. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I'd get a pin off it. And sometimes I would continue the rolls afterward. It's in freestyle, Greco, you just got to turn them. It's, oh, like really? a, it's like a sweep, right? Going from bottom to top, you get two points. Every time they're back exposed in, in freestyle and Greco, you get two points. And you can just keep doing it, right? If you imagine a gator roll, you could just keep doing that. Uh, another one's a leg lace. A leg lace is one where you lace up the guy's legs, twist them over. Legs are crisscrossed, so he's got to spin. Exposes the back. Jump over and do it again. You just keep jumping over and doing it again. Yeah. yeah. The leg lace is a little harder because you usually have to reset your grip because it, when they spin, it untwists a little bit. And if you didn't follow quick enough, then you have to like relace their legs and then go. There's some other there's some other grips that I like to use that you don't. I just noticed we all have names. Oh, yeah. There's names. How many did that? Juan <laughs> Street Fighter. I like that one. Yeah. Usually Arsenio has a name. Yeah. Yeah. Not creative today. Huh? <laughs> Oh, no, he, on here, he changes it every day. Oh. Yeah. <laughs>